This is how you heal a cut super fast. Let's go. Okay, so you get a really bad cut on your leg, right? You run and look for Neosporin, but you can't find it. Go to the fridge instead and take out one lemon. Cut the lemon in half like this. Raise your leg up high, take your lemon, and squeeze over your wound. Okay, so <laughs> there's so many things wrong with this video. What's up, everyone? I'm Dr. Maxfield. I'm Dr. Shaw, and we're back with a pretty fun video today. So I'm always trashing people's skincare hacks on TikTok, saying they don't work or they're harmful, but there are actually some good skincare hacks out there that I've seen, I'm actually been pretty impressed with, have actually tried to implement into my skincare routine. So people are pretty innovative and I kind of love what you guys are doing on social media. So this video, we're gonna be going over some of the best and worst hacks that we've seen on social media. And honestly, some of it gets pretty dangerous, uh, which is the reason why I react to some of these videos. For example, uh, there was this lady on TikTok uh, that was telling people to crush aspirin and put it on their face, which is extremely dangerous. You know, aspirin does have salicylic acid in it, which can have, you guys know I love salicylic acid, but at the end of the day, um, crushed aspirin can be horrible for your skin. And so that's the reason why we do this. And we're gonna go over some of the ones that are good and bad. So best and worst skincare hacks, here we go. Here we go. All right, so first up is the slugging hack. Slugging's actually been around forever. It's basically where you take an occlusive like Vaseline or CeraVe healing ointment or Aquaphor and then you put it on your skin as part of your skincare routine. So let's watch the video and let's talk about it. A few years ago, I interviewed Martha Stewart. She looked amazing and I asked her what her skincare secret was. Her answer, Vaseline. I mean, just look at her. This woman is 79 years old. She told me she applied petroleum jelly to her face, lips, and hands every single night before bed. Today, this practice is called slugging. Layering petroleum jelly over your skincare ingredients helps them penetrate deeper into the skin and prevent moisture loss so that when you wake up, you've got gorgeous glowing skin. Thank you, Martha. All right, so there's some good and bad in this one. Yeah, so petroleum, Bland, plain white petroleum is very, very inert. It's a very effective, if not the most effective moisturizer occlusant out there. Um, but because it's occlusive, that's I think where we're gonna get into trouble with this one. Yeah, so love Vaseline. It's one of my favorite skincare ingredients. I actually think everybody should own a nice tub of white petrolatum. It's one of the safest ingredients in skincare. There's only been one case ever of someone having an allergy to it. So a lot of people say this is a toxic ingredient. It comes from petroleum. What we use in skincare is so well refined that it is one of the safest ingredients that you can use in your skincare routine. Yeah, we use it in dermatology as a protective barrier. We use it around sensitive areas. We use it uh, post-operatively. It's actually been shown to be as effective as some topical antibiotics post-operatively for dermatologic surgery and preventing infection. So amazing ingredient. I personally use it on my lips, my eyes, my face to repair my skin barrier. Where you run into trouble is because of how occlusive it is, you can actually lock in really strong irritating ingredients like your retinoids, like your acids, and that can actually disrupt your skin barrier. So what I don't like is seeing people, especially with sensitive skin, taking really harsh actives and locking Vaseline over it. You're just gonna double, triple, quadruple the effects of those ingredients, which can be pretty dangerous to the skin. However, what I what slugging used to be was to actually just take your regular moisturizer or just have Vaseline just sit on your skin over a regular bland moisturizer, which is a great way to repair your skin barrier, especially if it's been damaged by the winter or by your actives. I don't like seeing most people using actives under Vaseline. Yeah, and then you have some more inert ones like niacinamide, uh, things like that that are really gentle on the skin. Using petroleum over that's probably okay, but you've just gotta be deliberate not using anything that's allergenic like tea tree oil or something that's irritating like retinoids under this Vaseline barrier. Right, so you just wanna be careful what you occlude under the Vaseline. So Vaseline over a bland fragrance-free moisturizer, huge thumbs up for me. I personally do it in the winter time about once every other week just to keep my barrier hydrated, doing it over strong actives gets like a kind of medium thumb to thumbs down for me. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so this next topic is uh, actually masks. A lot of people are making masks at home. They're using a lot of different ingredients for a lot of different things. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, flat out, 
I don't like it at all. <laughs> I don't like baking soda at all in skin. I don't know what, no. Okay, just no, it's gonna be a no for me. Okay, so baking soda, pH eight or higher, skin barrier, pH five to six. So you're taking something like a like an alkaline product. So alkaline or things above pH of seven um, actually disrupt the skin barrier more than acids do. So a lot of people hear acid, they think burn. <laughs> Truth is that baking soda or things that are alkaline actually cause much more disruption of the skin barrier because our skin barrier is full of lipids which get disrupted by alkaline substances. Okay, the most ridiculous thing is I was actually just about to say that. <laughs> We hadn't even talked about this, but that's exactly the point I was going to go with. But but he's right. Dr. Maxfield has never had an original thought in his life. I'd just like to say that. Well, I'm also older and wiser. <laughs> it's like four days older than me. Stronger. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Not mentally. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so we're looking at this ingredient, but this is why we use mild acids to strong acids when we're doing chemical peels on people. When you get into these alkaline peels and alkaline burns, they're just far more destructive, necrotic, and difficult to control the depth um, when you're using them. And then for acne scars, which is what she was using this for, uh, you know, it's really important that you're not using something super irritating on the skin if you have active acne. It's gonna increase that damage to the skin, the inflammation, the irritation, and it could just make the inflammatory part of the acne worse. And I completely agree with all that. Actually, DIY stuff, our, our editor, Pat, came up with this thing, like instead of DIY, which is do it yourself, he said DIY, W-H-Y, like why are you doing it? So, you know, I think that DIY stuff is okay if you're using ingredients that are proven to be effective. Uh, things like honey, which I love, you know, especially Manuka honey has tremendous, it actually may be one of the most beneficial ingredients in wound healing, period. So great ingredient. Um, turmeric has benefits. Green tea has benefits. So if you're using this to kind of make a nice mask that you like to kind of treat yourself, not against it, especially if you're using a good carrier oil. That's it. Exactly. So like there's some nice masks like the green tea with water with honey. And then there are some other masks. I saw a nice one with coffee, but the vehicle was olive oil. And so you have to be delivered about both the ingredient um, and then the vehicle. So for olive oil, we know it is a great anti-inflammatory and I've been on this ridiculous kick of oils lately. But the counterside to this as the olive oil specifically is kind of harmful for wound healing, disrupts the skin barrier a little bit. So you'd be much better off using something like a jojoba oil or a rosehip oil actually is another interesting oil with some with some ingredients in it. <laughs> with some ingredients in it. <laughs> well, there's like, there's a natural retinol in there and it's a, a very tricky topic. Yeah, so there are some oils that are great for the skin, like jojoba oil, which I love. So if you put your DIY skincare ingredients mix into this, you're gonna have way more benefits than using something like baking soda. So baking soda, huge thumbs down for me. DIY skincare, if done right, can be okay. All right, next one. This one was going crazy on TikTok. Um, something called the potato hack for acne. Um, actually, also not a new hack, but uh, let's talk about it. This morning, oh my God, I woke up with this thing. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. It's like throbbing on my forehead. So I'm gonna try the potato trick. I don't know if you have to use a certain kind of potato, but this is all I have. So I just sliced it like this, and I'm gonna tape it to my head. Supposedly, supposedly, the potato is supposed to suck the stuff out of the zit and then make it, like the swelling go away. I will update you guys in like six or seven hours. Thank God I work from home because, quick update, um, the potato's been on my head for like three minutes and it's making it not throbbing anymore. It's just like, it's just like soothing the area. So that's fantastic. Okay, it's, it's it's actually been like four hours, but I have to go to the nail salon. Oh my God. What do you think? In my mind while it's going, I'm going through like all of the physics I ever learned in my head. I'm like, okay, is there a way that the osmotic force is drawing out what's in the zit into the potato? You know, it doesn't work like that. It's you're not gonna be able to get this. If I know you guys know what it looks like to pop a zit. It would not get that thick greasy material to go through an intact skin barrier into the potato. Yeah, so you know, potatoes have some starches which can dry out a pimple. They actually are really high in salicylic acid, believe it or not. And so that obviously has anti-acne benefits to it. But let's just talk about the practicality of this. First of all, potatoes <laughs> have never been studied on the skin, okay? I actually got interviewed by like Days, which is like a magazine. I'll put a link below about it, but I talked all about the potato trick um, in that article. But ultimately, first of all, maybe it has some beneficial ingredients in it. We could debate it all day, never been proven. Also, practically, <laughs> 
are you going to walk around with a potato all day on your skin? I mean, let's talk about that. You know, where are you going to go? What if you have four pimples? You're just going to walk around with a whole salad on your face? Like, I don't know. I just, uh, I, you know, it's a nighttime. Routine. Clearly, this is a nighttime. Routine. I mean, who, you know, I don't know, you know, with your significant other, you got four potatoes taped to your face. I mean, let's be practical here. There are wonderful spot <laughs> treatments out there. Benzoyl peroxide spot treatments. There's all these new pimple patches that have come out from Hero Cosmetics and Peace Out. Much better options than taping a potato to your face it probably is cheaper um at the end of the day to use some of these things how, how expensive do you think potatoes are <laughs> well potatoes are pretty cheap you know i'm not saying potatoes are like an expensive thing but at the end of the day like potatoes are meant to be consumed okay <laughs> i don't know all right well actually this actually is a good segue because what we'll talk about now is acne patches this is a perfect time to segue into this next video. So this next one is about a hydrocolloid band-aids, so actual band-aids that people are using. Um Okay, it looks, it just looks irritated, honestly. The most significant thing I saw about that is her skin looked irritated when she pulled it off. This thing works, okay? <laughs> Look, I don't. Uh, so I actually, I always think that spot treatment is a huge caveat and that I'm gonna say all treatments are much more effective at preventing acne than treating acne after that inflammatory cascade has started rolling. Um, completely agree. So spot treat is something that you're doing on top of an already perfect acne routine. So you need to have your retinoid, you need to have your salicylic acid, you need to have your benzoyl peroxide or whatever you're using to treat your acne. And then you can use a spot treatment once you have breakouts, which are inevitable even if you have a perfect skincare routine. So actually a huge fan of hydrocolloid. So hydrocolloid has been used in wound healing. It's been used on blisters for a long period of time. It actually protects the wound from bacteria getting in. You know, it's, it's able to absorb moisture from the wound uh, without drying out the wound at all. So it's actually a wonderful thing that we use in wound care already. Yeah, and wound care is actually a really complex issue. It's something I did a little bit of in my training. And I gotta tell you, there's a myriad of options out there, all with different mechanisms. And this one is a good one. Yeah, so hydrocolloid, great for that. What I don't like about this video is using hydrocolloid bandages over your entire face. I mean, it is really truly meant as a spot treatment for the pimples that are already on the surface that you can see the head on. I love that, you know why? Because if you have a pimple patch on it, you won't pick at your skin, which a lot of people do. Um, it's really satisfying when you take them off. It actually camouflages the pimple when you're out so people can't see it as well. So sometimes I use them in clinic, no one can see them. They're almost nearly invisible, especially if they match well with your skin. And on top of that, they actually pull out a lot of that gunk and oil and stuff that's in that pimple. Yeah, I just remember how obvious it was on your skin. <laughs> Everyone called you out. No, 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 that was a, that was a certain one. So that was that was one that was not that was pretty obvious. However, uh, the ones from Hero Cosmetics, um, nearly invisible. So okay, I think the one that I was using that day was from Zit Sticka, um, which was very obvious. And then uh, the one that I was using from Hero Cosmetics was nearly invisible for my skin. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fair. It just, I think it is important. Yeah, it's gonna be most effective for those zits that are already right at the surface. So yeah, so hydrocolloid bandages, um, especially the pimple patches, if you cut them into small pieces and you spot treat with them, thumbs up for me. Um, using it over your entire face, thumbs down for me. And I also think you need to be using this with an appropriate acne routine. All right, the next one is what we call the Just For Men Hair Dye Eyebrow Hack. So let's get started. Finally trying this Just For Men eyebrow hack. It was only $8.99 at Target, so let's see what you about. Comes with color developer and color base. You're supposed to put an even amount of each. I did not, but I fixed it later. Mix them bitches up with the back of the brush they gave you. Ugh, smells like men. After a minute or two, it'll start getting darker. And since this was designed for men's beards, they give you this brush, but we ain't using that. We're using an eyebrow brush. We need precision. Hit it one good time right there, one good time right there, right there, right there, and then wait five minutes for the mix to get dark. So once it looks like you got Sharpie caterpillars on your forehead, it's ready. So they say just wipe it off and go get this. <laughs> First of all, I love her. She's she is hilarious. She's got good energy. Uh, so interesting hack. Um, so what do you think about it? 
I mean, no problems that dying anything else doesn't have. Right. So I completely agree. This actually works. First of all, it works. This is a hack that actually will work for the skin. Um, the reason why is because hair dyes, um, not only do they dye, so all our hairs are not terminal hairs in the sense that they're not those dark, coarse, thick hairs that we have on our skin. We have something called vellus hairs. Those are like little baby hairs and they're very much light colored. And when you use a dye on them, it will actually make those hairs stand out a little bit more. And so it will give you more fullness to the areas that are lighter. Additionally, it will also uh, highlight a little bit of that skin or that top layer of the skin called the stratum corneum and give it a little bit of color as well. And so if you do that, it will actually make your eyebrows look thicker temporarily. So um, that will probably last for about a week or so, the effect on the skin. And then on the hairs will last a little bit longer as your eyebrows grow out. So this is an effective hack. Um, one thing that I would recommend for people doing this is to actually use Vaseline on the areas that you don't want the dye to go because you don't want to dye those areas. You also don't want hair dye getting on your eyelids, which is the thinnest skin on the body and the most sensitive skin on the body. <laughs> I feel like we need a GoFundMe page for his eye for his eyelids. <laughs> Link below, GoFundMe for my eyelid. <laughs> uh, so you know, I think that you want to protect the the eyelid skin, of course, and of course, hair dye has one of the most common allergens that we find, something called PPD, um, and PPD is one of the most common allergens in skincare products or dyes, and so a lot of people can become allergic to it. So you do want to be careful with this, especially if you have an allergy. On the box, it tells you to patch test on your inner arms, so I would definitely patch test because of how common of an allergen this is, but it will make your eyebrows appear thicker temporarily. There is something called eyebrow tint, which is very similar. It's much more expensive and it's going to have about the same effects as this is. So this is a hack that works and will save you money. Uh, eventually we're going to dedicate a lot of time actually to hair. <laughs> so just know that this isn't like the direct segue. We're going to just devote undivided attention and energy towards hair at some point. So. I have a lot of things to say about hair. So we got a lot to say about hair. So for men's hair, for hair growth, for women's hair, for hair loss, for everything like that in between, hair coming at you, dermatologists specialize in the hair, the skin, and the nails. And so hopefully we'll be giving you some more content like that soon. So these are our best and worst hacks. We have a lot more videos to go through, like hundreds of videos so to go much. through. So this is just gonna be like part one of a series probably that we're gonna do. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Yeah, we appreciate it. We always love the interaction and the feedback. And we are, totally flabbergasted by the growth of the channel. I mean, I mean, we're blown away. We're sending yeah. each other texts all the time. Like this is, this is amazing. Honestly, we thank you guys so much for all your support. And honestly, I, I don't know why you follow us, but you know, <laughs> we're going to keep trying to put out great content for you guys. And hopefully we'll be helpful to you. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>